Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to try out the newly released Boeing 707-320C Local Legend 10 available in the marketplace for $15 or if you have deluxe or premium or whatever it is $10, it was $10 for me and I'm going to see whether it's any good though I'm not going to make a definitive, definitive determination for you I'm just going to show you and uh, you can decide for yourself uh, but it was supposed to be released in the first week of July and it got delayed because they were dissatisfied with it uh, so after a nearly three month delay it is here and well is it good i don't know let's find out together and we have the liveries here it's just the generic airlines except for the pan am livery and the house livery so well there's a house livery house cargo house passenger and then the pan am passenger here uh, so hopefully people will be up for making liveries for it but that'll probably depend on whether it's any good. Uh, so there's the fuel and payload options. Let's get some payload in. All right, so here we are. And this is what the overhead panel looks like. And uh, it started out at nighttime for some reason. So let me turn down the, the lighting here. Now well, the dome red is really strong. Okay, there we go. And I'll do the startup procedure in a different video. I just want to get first impressions here. And this is what the interior looks like. It's got some of the same sort of nicks and scratches that I've seen on numerous planes. I believe there's an airplane heaven plane, and so that's why that's sort of familiar as far as the, the quality of the steering column. Not bad on the sides here. still feels fairly familiar but again for fifteen dollars it's very good outside all right so pan am livery too bad they don't have the version with the really complex sound suppression system i always thought that that was very interesting but there's a later version where that's all been simplified instead of having like a huge cluster of nozzles Well, let me uh, try out the drone cam around it. Well, that's the look of the flaps. And here's the interior. Not super complicated, interesting texture. Oop. Interesting texture on the sidewalls. Interesting they have a hard wall here. And then what looks to be the first class cabin. Fancier seats here. Safety instructions. Nice sort of booth. So this area is a little bit better looking. The rear area, not so much, but, you know, it is what it is. And then we're here. Around the plane. It looks good. Let me try to take off an exterior view. <laughs> this might be a bad idea. Probably is a bad idea. But let's see how it goes. And you can hear it as well out here. I have the Freeware uh, 720, Boeing 720, in X-Plane 12, and that had some nice wing flex on it. There's a 
try to keep this in the middle here from the outside view. We're going pretty fast and I can't rotate. Am I too heavy? Okay, I'm gonna sink like this. I'm going like 190 knots. Huh. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I was having trouble rotating. Maybe the CG we need to pay more attention to. This is a very quick look at the Boeing 720B by Shenshi in X-Plane 12. Uh, that's the front panel. The engineer panel isn't actually functional, but again, this is a freeware plane. And then this is how takeoff looked. And what I especially wanted to draw attention to is the look of the wing and also the wing flex, which I felt was much superior on the X-Plane 12 version than in the Microsoft Flight Sim version. Overall, I sort of like the exterior look in general. Anyway, so that's a variant of the 707, the 720B by Shenshi in X-Plane 12. I feel like these dials over here are a little bit flat. I didn't really notice much wing flex on takeoff either. As we go around here, I'm definitely going way too fast. But yeah, it looks good from outside. I just there's something about the center panel that rubs me the wrong way. The gear lever, I forget if it sort of ends up in the middle. I thought the one in X Plane 12 did. Well, the fan sound. At full thrust, it's like this. And then as a whine up front. If you're not a full throttle. View out the window. We've got the overhead eyebrow windows as well. Just in case you have to navigate by the stars or something. We do have a GPS unit here. I don't know if we can get rid of it. <laughs> uh, so the manual is 13 pages long. So uh, not a whole lot there. It looks good, but it's 13 pages long and most of that's just telling you which instrument is which. It does have a simple checklist. There's also a 10-pager on the all-pilot and flight director. That's on the pedestal right here. Autopilot controller. It's a very simple one with a bank angle controller there. And all-pilot pitch control and... That's the all-pilot power. There's manual, nav, and heading over there. So don't expect too much as far as the autopilot's capabilities here. Oop. Nope. Well, that didn't kill the engine, did it? Well, maybe I should check that. I have hit cutoff on engine 3. Barely hear that over the... Over the communications. Well, it's definitely listening to the right. What happens if I just go start? Well, the effect of turning off one engine certainly is significant. Rudder trim. Right, we might need you. Okay, so with engine th three out, seems like about 0.9 degrees of rudder trim to the left does the trick. But we have all the switches. How about the engineer panel? Well, there's the engineer panel. Does it seem to do things 
Yeah, it does, because engine three has been cut off, and the oil temp and oil pressure are low there. We've got low pressure indicated there for the fuel system, for the center tank. and different fuel qualities so that's good uh, it seems like the engineer panel is looking good got the kilowatts there down on engine 3 as well the engineer panel is functional and looking good which is excellent so the the thing that I have a problem with is it seemed to take a lot of effort for me to rotate so I'm gonna actually restart but I'm gonna get the CG in a better location. Alright, so again with a decent load, not not fully loaded here, but let me just try and bring the center of gravity further back. Interesting, there's four baggage, rear baggage, and economy class. What about the first class cabin that we just saw? The crew is definitely not that heavy. Maybe that's the biggest problem. Okay, uh, definitely reduce the crew mass, I think is the key. Maybe when they made these sliders, they should have distributed these a little bit differently. I think the biggest problem is that the crew should have a limit to it that is less than the four baggage. And I think right now, you see, these, all, these two are just 200 pounds. This one should probably be limited as well, just like those two are, and not track with these, because this being so heavy throws everything off. Maybe something like that, and then a little bit less in the forward baggage uh, brings us so that the center of gravity is in a happier place. So that might be a consideration. Uh, definitely when you're flying it, do that. Let's see if I take off at a better speed this time. So the 707 originally flew in 1957, though there was a prototype for the first jet airliner from Boeing, not the first jetliner overall. The first Boeing jetliner prototype was the 367-880. That's the famous one that went inverted. And that was the prototype for the 707. And the 707 early variant flew in 1957. That was the 1 120 and then uh, the first one that actually flew for an airline was with Pan Am in 1958. Now, technically there is another version of the 707 available, it's just not a 707-707, it's the KC-135, and I think there's an E3 as well. Those are variants of the 707 for uh, aerial refueling and AWACS purposes, airborne reconnaissance purposes, those variants are freeware. And maybe I'll compare the freeware version to this one, though I expect those will have the 747 cockpit, and so it'll be a glass cockpit thing, and not as sophisticated as this old 707 with its gauges. But maybe I'm wrong, maybe it has gauges. I'm just expecting that it'll be a glass cockpit thing. Okay, so having rebalanced it, let me check the balance. Though I really shouldn't take off from SFO with these things, because uh, it takes forever for the menus to pop up because everything is so slow out there. There's a lot of undefines here for some reason. Um, well, oh, it, it actually messed up the... So you might have to double check that, because it messed up the distribution here. I don't know why it reset that. But, and I want a lot more in the economy. Okay, so hopefully we're good now. And let me see if I can take off properly this time. And I'll do the takeoff in here. Okay, let me see. Okay, we can rotate at a decent speed this time. And we're off the ground a little bit earlier than last time. There is a plane there. But still sort of took a lot of runway. The old planes tended to. The old airliners, the jet airliners. 
And it's to take a lot to run away. I don't know about these indicators down here for rudder, aileron, and elevator. They're certainly not like that. Well, uh, pilot power. Oop. I can't turn it on. Okay. It does not like that. Like I said, there's a special manual for the autopilot. There's a yaw damper. Maybe the yaw damper not being on. There's a yaw damper. Okay. Now? Ah. Needed the yaw damper on in order to turn the yaw pilot on. Ah, and now with the yaw pilot on, it's zeroed out those indicators, the rudder, aileron, and elevator. And got on heading, and, and it's leveling out at the right heading. Okay, and then should I toggle the altitude hold here? Okay, I think it's trying to hold the altitude at about 15,000 feet. Or not so much. Wait, it's going up again. Um, I don't know about the altitude hold. Well, this flight director mode here for pitch seems a little bit more influential. All right, well, I see San Jose International there. And I'm going to try to land there. All right, let's check out the air brakes. Well, they certainly pop out. That's a long run-up zone. Get how long the landing gear is on this. Okay, I am down. Yeah, it's, it's capable of some tight turns. All right, practically as sure as possible flight, but I have made it. <laughs> I went from San Francisco to for San Francisco to San Jose. Probably this is the wrong one to have taken out, but anyway, I seem to have a parking spot there, so I'll just go over there. I don't think this parking spot is really suited to a plane of my size, but... Alright. So, there you have it. The 707 Local Legend 10, long-awaited. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.